Welcome to Charm Conversations, an interview series that focuses on meeting some of the individuals in the hypnosis community and finding out a little bit more about them. I'm Cy. I'm going to be your host through these conversations, and I've had the benefit of meeting quite a few interesting individuals, both stateside and internationally, who I felt were great individuals to speak about what they see in the community, what got them started in hypnosis, and why they're here. So let's take a few minutes, talk to each one of them, get an idea about where they see the community going, where it's been, how they got started in hypnosis, and how they're just like the rest of us, looking for an interesting time and figuring out the human mind. Charmed Conversations is brought to you by Charmed Hypnosis and Education Hypnocon. Charmed is coming back in January 2021 as Charmed Online, utilizing an online format to invite people from around the world to sign up and listen in. Right now, the price of a ticket goes for the low price of $15, with an additional $5 taken off the top if you're a member of Black Rose or another affiliated kink organization. See the registration site for details. The convention kicks off on January 14th with a pre-con, which will include classes by The Secret Subject, Leah Lure, and Wise Guy, followed by three days of hypnosis fun. Act now before November 30th to pick up that ticket for the low, wonderful holiday price of $15, because on December 1st, it goes up to the new price of $25. For more details and to purchase your ticket, go to charmedhypno.org. That's C-H-A-R-M-E-D, hypno.org. My next interview is with Leah Lure, someone whose name is echoed throughout the community and co-author of Hypnotic Amnesia, the book you remember on how to forget. Frequently found at workshops and conventions alike, she was a lot of fun to talk with, and I walked away learning a few things, which is always a great feeling. Hopefully you do as well. We are getting to chat with the lovely Leah Lure and have Hello. conversations with her about her, I guess, experience with the hypnosis. I, I don't know. Lee, what would you say is your kind of like your resume or, or how does everybody know you in the hypnosis community? So I've been a member of the hypnosis community or at least the current hypnosis community for about 10 years. Um, I first got involved in hypnosis in the Boston area where Mefki, who started Nihu and then was really instrumental in helping many of the other um, hypnocons come off. So she was running the Boston hypno group at the time along with Buddy. And I ran into Buddy and I started going to those events with my then partner. And I went to a lot of them. I had been interested in hypnosis for a short period of time. I had been hypnotized when I was in college, and so I knew it was possible, but I had never really done it myself. I looked at um, the books in the library, and I thought they were all script-based, and I was like, no one's going to get into trance with this bullshit, <laughs> and I just put them all back. And then it literally sat on a shelf until my partner was like, I don't believe in hypnosis at a party. And I made it a mission to go and hypnotize her. So she and I, um, I ran into Buddy because I was determined to find somebody that could hypnotize her. And she and I would go to all these events and we would do, um, we would attend the classes. Sometimes we would do demos. I have to say that I consider myself highly lucky that, I had such a responsive partner from the get-go because they were just they are just a fantastic person and subject and it made it really easy for me to play around with whatever I wanted so initially I put some YouTube videos up with them although they're down now for their privacy and and uh, so some people might have known me from that I started making audios and doing live sessions with people um, I don't know, maybe about a year or so after I really got into hypnosis and started attending the meetings. And then I set up a website and I just started offering, you know, audios for sale in addition to all the ones I had had for free. I also, over the course of that time, started putting on Eat My Darkwood with Mr. Dream and then the London Hypnosis Workshops alone. So I do that in England. And I have another event that I do called Nest, which is a tickling event. And even before I got into hypnosis for myself, we've always had hypnotists, not always, we've had hypnotists at Nest doing classes and demos and things like that for years and years and years. And I think that that, even though I couldn't always go to the classes because I was, um, you know, running the event, mm -hmm. it was always so much fun to incorporate anything I could learn at those classes 
into my life when I finally did get into it. So I've been doing a lot of hypnosis stuff for about 10 years. Um, and then um, about six years ago, DJ Pynchon and I wrote a book called Hypnotic Amnesia. So those are probably the ways that people know me unless they've been to an event that I've been teaching at. And I also gotcha. have taught a lot. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. And I mean, I've known your name for a long time, honestly. Uh, I think that a lot of people in the community probably have. And it was, um, your, your book is definitely a, a very interesting read. I had missed out on so many things before this year between mind play, the hypnotic amnesia book that you guys have. It, I always feel like my eyes just got opened up this year because Charmed was really my first hypnosis convention and mm. getting to just see everything going on for what I thought at the time was just a, a niche uh, thing mm. that not everybody really got into and to just see all the people playing and all the interesting things. Yeah, it's a hell of a community. So it's, it's really great to have people mm -hmm. like you in it. Oh, well, thanks. I'm really glad that I'm part of it and I have some really fantastic friends and I am like many people longing for the days that we all get to be together in person again absolutely i think that uh, everybody wishes that this year could have been a physical event but <laughs> i i think online has added some interesting things to it because it's now you know I, I know people around the world who not only do hypnosis but we've done sessions and stuff like that together and it it's opened a door that i don't know if i really would have had uh anywhere else and i think that people have seen the same that I think everybody's gotten a little bit better at online, but at the same time, <laughs> it really does take some of the options off the table when it comes down to things. Although since everything's in your own mind, I guess there's right. a lot It shouldn't have to take thing. anything off the table except actually being together. But Very true. <laughs> so Lee, what got you interested in hypnosis in the first place? I know you said it was because of your partner, um, but you yeah. said you got hypnotized in college. Was that just an interest that you'd had or just I had had no interest. This was like a college stage show and oh, I okay. ended up on stage and I actually participated in another one after that. I think the next year, cause I, cause I thought it was pretty cool, but I was, I really was like, because my kink is kind of mind control, mm -hmm. I thought how amazing it would be to just tell somebody to do a thing and they would automatic, uh, automatically do it. So <laughs> the fact that it can be a thing that happens now is really, really exciting. So got an, interested in, in college and then like immediately lost interest after that, after the, the scholarly tomes were what I could find. And, um, I think that actually realizing that there are people that respond to what you say so viscerally that almost anything you want to make happen with hypnosis can happen. It's just so powerful and so exciting that I can't imagine not doing it. Like I still sometimes have visions in my head of a, um, a hypno session in Boston where somebody was teaching us the Elman induction mm -hmm. and it was just like everything that they did may not like, like not everything may have stuck the first time, but as I did them, as I practiced them, as I saw my partner's response, um, it just hit me so strongly that this was a thing that I could apply to almost any aspect of my life. And that it was so much fun and it was so exciting for me that I just really had to dive in. And so I would, you know, go to these meetings. I would go to parties. We would hold parties. I would bring hypnotists in or do classes at the events that I um, ran, or I would start doing hypno events because I knew that there was, you know, much like Mepke, that there was a group of people out there that really could benefit from and have a great time with doing all these things, with learning these things. And I could learn things from them too. So, um, so that's what I did. <laughs> that's awesome. And I fully admit that I'm right there with you when it comes down to the, uh, the mind control kink, because I think that's where that really hit me, uh, when it first started coming into to hypnosis, I'd always had the, you know, you, you follow the files for the longest time. And I found myself in a, in a very difficult time to finding my transfer the first time. 
but ever since finding it it's amazing how uh, not pliable but that may be a, a case for some uh, when it comes down to how nimble and how adaptable the human mind is. And I have been a mm -hmm. fan of puzzles for forever. And the human hmm. mind has always been a puzzle that nobody can 100% solve. It is an ever-growing puzzle, and everybody's brain is different. Watching mm -hmm. people respond to suggestions in one way versus another versus ones that can do you know, hallucinations versus tactile sensation, it is just amazing to me the amount of yeah. doors that hypnosis opens up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's truly fantastic. I love stretching the boundaries of what I or somebody else thinks that hypnosis can do. Um, you know, just in terms of playing around with every single sense as its own thing, playing around with, um, and actually Naj out in um, the West Coast does this really well, but playing around with sense your sense of proprioception, you know, where your body is and where things are in relationship to where you think they are parts of you and i feel like all of these things are just really fun ideas to play around with um to push things a little bit to tweak things a little bit to do things that sound terrible and maybe are but with the right partner are so much fun oh absolutely <laughs> i like it all you know i i i never thought that and this is just probably going way off topic for a second but i never thought that iq play you know, was an interesting thing to me. And it mm -hmm. was very amazing to have a conversation with somebody where we did it four times. The same question they asked me to describe music and how it made me feel. And that at every stage, I just absolutely remember all of them and just going, wow, there was no, <laughs> you know, there was no pretending there was no nothing. My brain really was just in that state. And it just makes you realize how amazing your brain can be with stuff. So... It is literally amazing. And I know that even the stuff that we do, no matter how far we seem to push it, is like just the tip of the iceberg of how incredible our minds can be. Like we don't yet have the best way to communicate with our minds because of our, you know, our, because say, for example, if I was hypnotizing you or you were hypnotizing me, our unconscious mind's understanding of things taken in from our senses versus our conscious mind's way of understanding things versus the other person's mm. conscious way of understanding things versus their unconscious minds. You know, so there's all these layers that we have to work through, but there's just so much out there that allows you to like encourage and play around with and like prod a little bit and discover yeah. what somebody is actually capable of. And it is mind blowing. And that is one of the things I love about the community is that you will find individuals such as yourself and myself who, who love doing that. I honestly, it's not a scary thing. I absolutely love it that one of the people that I work with basically doesn't have carte blanche, but knows most, if not all of my limits and will basically every week come up with some new random thing. And it is never the same thing twice. And I just love experiencing how my brain will change every time. Mm -hmm. Because it's the mystery and then the experience and going, wow, I didn't think that my brain was possible. It was capable of doing that. But mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, it, like even I didn't even know about the pro, uh, proprioception. Yeah. That is amazing as a concept. So now I'm just <laughs> like, I want to go see what that could do. Yeah. Really go play around with it. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 see, this is how other kinks start. Damn it. When you talk to people and you're just like, oh, hey, that sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you've been around in the community for a long time. And yeah. when it comes down to it, like if you, if we were talking to somebody or you were talking to somebody who just got into the hypnosis community, what would be a piece of advice that you give them? I mean, they're just starting out. Maybe they found their first file or they found their first video that they wanted to watch. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give them just starting out? So I would probably tell them to who understand um, that they can accept, reject, or adjust any suggestions that they've been given. Um, I have a Discord group where I do week daily sessions with folks, group sessions, and I'm always telling this to people because there's a lot of new people that come in and the misconception sometimes is that hypnosis can make you do all sorts of things that you don't want to do. And I actually believe to some extent that if you believe that, 
that strongly enough, it will be true for you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you allow yourself to understand that your brain is your own, that suggestions that are given to you don't really belong to anybody else, they're yours to accept or reject or to play around with in a way that makes them better for you, then, um, then your brain is really being set up for success so that you know that you can't be taken advantage of and you'll understand that you have a great deal of agency and flexibility in the types of things that you can do. And that's like the hypno you know, advice, I would say. And then otherwise, I would say make friends, trust that you have the ability to be a great subject or a great hypnotist, and then just have as much fun as you can. That's fantastic advice. And I know that a number of people at Charm gave me that same advice. Uh, about just being open, making friends, you know, finding yeah. people and just trusting in yourself to, to explore it, forgiving yourself if you make mistakes, because it's a learning process. You know, you may yeah. not be able to do it right the first time, but on the hundredth time, you're probably going to be pretty well practiced at it. And the so. nice thing is that there are people, like if you're a new hypnotist and you're starting out, I think it's fantastic to reach out to people that are really great subjects so that they can give you feedback on what you've done. I think feedback is so valuable in this world. Like sometimes, you know, if you're an experienced hypnotist, you can see the feedback happening before you, but it's still valuable sometimes to get that verbally from your subjects. And if you're a subject who's brand new, I think it's super amazing to allow yourself to test out different hypnotists and to discover which stuff you respond really well to. Like maybe... This is a pet peeve of mine. I will say that some people are like, oh, I'm auditory. <laughs> and I'm always like, okay, that's great. But if you can see you are literally visual and you have emotions and you can touch things and you are literally also kinesthetic. Mm -hmm. And I think the hypnosis should be about unlimiting yourself. So if you limit yourself and you want to do that, which I don't know why somebody would, but right. there are probably some valid internal reasons. But hypnosis is really fantastic at allowing us to experience more of the world around us and more of our own internal world. And I think that the idea that we can do those things with hypnosis is what makes it like candy. Like, you know, it's the kind of thing I can't just have one potato chip. I'm going to yes. eat more and more uh, because we keep opening new doors. We keep finding new things. We keep experiencing and exploring new ways that we can behave and act and respond. And all of that is just really compelling. You know, Lee, I have to admit fully that this is one of the things I love about your work is that you are so passionate about these things. And you're, I've listened to a number of your files. I'm actually you know, a member of your Discord. And I love mm -hmm. the way you just take such life and energy to these things because that's, that was a thought I never really had about not limiting yourself to the different um, modalities. I know that when I first started out, I identified as digi auditory digital. and mm -hmm. But other people have mentioned to me, well, you also feel a lot. You know, you're really kinesthetic about things, too. You know, mm -hmm. even if you suck at visualizations, that's something as a skill-wise you can learn. And also, why wouldn't you want to? Because then yes, it's right. the ability to see it in your internal world. Thank you. That's actually a really great piece of advice, even for me. <laughs> Thanks. I often think, so when I first got into hypnosis, I remember reading somewhere and probably hearing from other people, too, about how they couldn't see a thing. So I have that same problem. When somebody else is doing hypnosis, if I'm following along, I, instead of imagining what they're imagining, will often just imagine this, like, gray-green fog in my mind. It's very similar every single time but if i'm on my own and i'm just thinking about stuff or if i'm talking sometimes i get clear images that pop in my head and i have to tell people it's not like it's a movie it's not as clear as mm. you know my eyes are open and i'm seeing you know like the microphone in front of me but like i'll have flashes in my head of places i've been of buildings that i've seen of sometimes of different people but people are less likely for me but the idea that if you can see your brain will be able to process information for you, but sometimes it just happens so quickly that you're not aware of it can be under, you know, something that people can really understand. Cause maybe you can't picture an apple in your head, but maybe you could draw one. Yeah. Even if you're a crappy artist, you could probably draw a picture and be like, Oh yeah, that's an apple. Yeah. And your brain like does have this ability to process things. So 
I think not being so hard on yourself if you can't literally see things like they're a movie and just maybe if you get flashes in your brain ever, just try to appreciate the fact that you're there. I really feel that appreciating what it is that your unconscious mind can actually do for you is super powerful as a technique to become a better subject in every way possible. I think that we as both hypnotists and subjects often forget that the unconscious mind really does better when it's appreciated. And so sometimes if you listen to my work, I'm thanking the unconscious. I'm telling it how amazing it is. I'm telling it that I know it can do these things. And I feel like the more I do these things and the more other people actually pay attention to their brains, the better things get. Because I think that a lot of times we have on a conscious level learned to completely disregard what the unconscious mind tells us a lot of the time. And whether that's a feeling or a tingle or an idea that pops in our head, we're always like, no, no, no. And yet it would have been valuable had we followed that information, had we paid attention to it. It might be akin to say, the CEO of a company neglecting something that the person in the mail room or the boiler room is telling them before things, you know, blow up in a way that's not pleasant because we don't always want to pay attention to the messages. And both of those are like, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that we have boiler rooms or mail systems in the literal sense inside us, but we do have that kind of, you know, um, <laughs> similar kind of stuff going on with us. We have things that deliver messages and I think we should pay attention to them. The more you pay attention to them, I think the better we get at dealing with the phenomena that come up at allowing the phenomena to happen in ways that seem magical. Hypnosis is not magic, but it often feels like it's magical. And I love being able to explore that kind of stuff. Wow. I mean, yeah. Uh... That's amazing, Lee. I do appreciate you giving that. I, I could probably listen to you talk about this for hours because you've got so many amazingly valid points about stuff that I never even thought the process. So, yeah, I'm just really glad I have access to your work. <laughs> Thanks. There's a lot of it out there. So, you know, I'm... <laughs> Yeah, if, 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 you know, pimping her work for a moment, fellows and ladies, if, and all the everybody else, anybody who identifies however you want to, uh, y if you go looking for her on the internet, it is amazing some of the stuff that you'll find. So uh, I always recommend everybody go look her up. Thanks. There's, I have a lot of, a lot of free audios that are out there and they're all different sorts. So on my website, you're likely to find some that are slightly more either beginner basic, let's get you to be a good subject slash kinky stuff. And then um, through the discord, there's a bunch more, uh, at least the group, the day to day group ones are a little bit more, um, especially this year, <laughs> mental health related and let's have a good time related um, than like, you know, the other paid files that I have. So there's a lot of stuff out there for people that are just curious about hypnosis, are needing a pick me up, that kind of thing. That's great. Especially like you said, for <laughs> the current situation we all find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you touched on one of your pet peeves, but I mean, do you really have, a rumor or a misconception in the community that you would love to dispel about hypnosis? I think that you can be hypnotized to do things that you wouldn't think that you do because you probably haven't actually thought about them. So your brain doesn't have a strong no filter going on. Um, so I believe that people can be hypnotized to do things that they wouldn't ordinarily do. I'm not saying it's going to happen on session one, but there are plenty of people out there in the community who I feel are good at maybe grooming people to serve their wants and their needs. And maybe people are okay with that. If you're okay with having that happen to you, then awesome. But if you're not okay with that happening to you, I feel like it's great to go and research your hypnotist and not just by you know finding out about them from their favorite subject like if i go to review if i go to look at something on amazon to determine if i want to buy it i always read all the negative reviews just oh, yeah. to make sure just in case i might know what i'm getting into so like the positive reviews you can pretty much trust to be great and not all like i can't 100 percent trust the negative reviews either because sometimes they're just 
clearly you bought the wrong product or, you know, you didn't know what you were getting into or you didn't understand it. But like they're like, I think valid constructive criticism about people is something that's important. So if you're going to get into something with the folks that are out there, just do some research and take care of yourself. And that's great advice. I think that that's something everybody sort of needs to do just because it is like you said, reading the negative reviews on Amazon is something I think most people do just to make sure, hey, what are you getting yourselves into? And we all look at reviews for things. So why not do the same thing for the person or person you're going to work with or the file you're going to download? Because mm. it is your brain and you want to have a good experience. So take the time to just look it up first. See how you think it might impact you. Yeah. Really good advice. Thanks. So I know uh, when you mentioned before that you kind of got into the whole mind control aspect, but do you have a fa- one of the favorite kinks you'd like to talk about in hypnosis? Would it be mind control? Would it be other things? What's <laughs> what's one that you really enjoy in the community? Um, so I love amnesia, which is probably unsurprising, and I really, really enjoy playing around with people's um, understanding of what they think they know and having fun with that. I like when people don't know a thing and then they can all of a sudden know a thing and then they get this like look on their face like, oh, that's what just happened, oh. And I adore that. I like when people are uh, amnesic for some period of time and then they everything hits them. And then they usually get these really like amazing expressions on the faces like, oh, I didn't know I could do that or I didn't know I had done that or what just happened there usually, you know, in good ways, but I, I'm sort of, I love that. And I, I love that. And I love that. (laughs) I think we gathered that. Yeah. (laughs) So definitely amnesia, definitely after control, amnesia is one of my favorites. I, I absolutely have to admit that that is a very interesting one. I think for everybody who, who joins into hypnosis, I was like, so, you know, can you make me forget things? I mean, it, it's probably one of the most I think, common things you see pop up. Like, well, mm-hmm. how do you forget stuff? Well, really <laughs> all you're doing is you're putting it off to the side for a little bit. And it's amazing. I, I'm, I've experienced that, at least to a small degree. So I haven't seen the other side of it where watching somebody else remember something. I'm sure that is absolutely an amazing look. And also, probably- I will. I will say that I think it's very valuable for people that are subjects to videotape themselves going into trance and responding in trance. Like nobody else has to see it, but you should watch yourself and notice what you do because it is, you know, that's one of the things that I really love about doing sessions with people is that I can see the way their eyes roll up. I can see them drool because you can't always see that online and I kind of like the drool. You can watch them you know them respond, you know, in full. And I think all of that is really exciting and I'm all in favor of people knowing what they look like when they're deeply in trance and being unashamed of it. You know, just being just being aware that there are people who appreciate what they look like as they go into trance and that that's awesome. Yeah, I've been told I have a very visual expression it's very easy to see me going through different stages Mm -hmm. i've only recorded myself once and i uh, now i really want to go do it again so that's a great piece of advice (laughs) all right so when it comes down to being a content creator which i know is something that's very difficult with i think probably the variety of, of kinks and fun and things that you can do in hypnosis what do you think is something that is the hardest part for for communities such as the one with hypnosis is it finding something that everybody's going to enjoy making content you feel touches a larger subject what do you feel is really uh, difficult about being a content creator in the hypnosis community so my personal hardest thing is finding an editor or a producer who really gets what i want to do and can help make it happen so i used to do like all of that myself but i am not very good at those things and in order for me to actually get things out on a regular timely basis, I need other people that can do that. So I was lucky this year that I found an editor who was really great. Um, and actually I found a multiples and that was even better. But so sometimes, you know, finding somebody who can help me make my vision or my auditory vision (laughs) come to life is really helpful. But 
consistently finding ideas that aren't only great ideas, but are also ideas that other people haven't like done to death or finding other ideas that my particular style of hypnosis can bring to life in a way that really resonates with people. Like there are, so for example, um, Shibby, I don't know if you know who uh, she yeah, is, who but she does Shibby. like really fantastic, great, um, sexy audios, right? She's, like the queen as far as I can tell about doing that kind of stuff she's so good about it and so her stuff really resonates with people on that level but I don't have that same desire and excitement for that kind of stuff so I have to make sure that the things that I do I am passionate about and I am excited about and that they're probably going to be slightly more you get a thing out of this that you didn't necessarily that you that I probably talked about that you were going to get out of it, but you didn't really know that you wanted, you were going to get out of it and you'll feel really good, but they're not going to be quite that same level of uh, sizzle, I guess. <laughs> I can fully appreciate that. So finding things that, 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 that let people see my sizzle is, is important. I think that's harder than it sometimes should be. Well, I think like you said, your personal style of hypnosis, which honestly is, very distinctive. I think that you have probably, uh, like all all of the major names that uh, I've at least met through the community, all have their own very particular flavor of how they do things. And yours is such a a rhythmic, so conversational uh, mm. handling every time that you're talking with individuals is amazing. Just for how fast it flows and. Um, I think the 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 one I always laugh at the most that I love was your Lee file. Um, the one mm. where it's like all of the words with an end in Lee. I all of them. <laughs> amazed. I never, th I mean, I'm sitting there and feeling like my vocabulary was increasing from the file, but it was just such a cool concept and very distinctive style for you. Yeah, I have a good name for that. And that's not even all the words. There's like eight or 900 of them. And I only brought a few into that file. Trust me, I had to go through them all. I don't remember all the words that are in there because I've only listened to the file myself maybe a couple times and while I was editing it. So, um, <laughs> but there are many more than I used and uh, that is definitely my style to talk kind of quickly and conversationally. I, I don't leave a lot of long pauses for the most part and I kind of like hammer things through and uh, maybe that helps to not quite lull people into trance. I don't know. Yeah, I still laugh because snappy response was the one that always caught me. The the, the, the off to the side and never expected that just out of nowhere. I I love that audio. Like I, I made it with a friend. We're doing it there on video. I'm on video on Skype. And there's a moment where you hear me laugh on it because I yep. said um, the right phrase to them. And they they literally just face planted and I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Even years later, it is still amusing and delightful to me. I like that response that somebody might just be so, you know, deeply entranced that even when they're up, they can just plop right back down. I love that so much. Absolutely. And I, I can absolutely understand where that, where, where that visualization would come from. <laughs> so... Um, do you feel as a content creator, especially in the hypnosis community, that you have a duty to educate people as well as make content that you feel people would enjoy? Or do you feel that it's, that it's kind of up to each own individual to kind of do their own education? So I don't feel obligated to do that. There is a lot of information out there. There's lots from before I got into hypnosis and there's so much from then on. And then I think that we as people are obligated to ourselves to practice and explore and learn what works for us and for our partners, our subjects, our hypnotists, our listeners, and to keep learning as much as we can. So I feel in that self-education is super important, but I don't feel necessarily a need to educate other people. And I think that um, it happens and I like to get up in front of, you know, groups of folks and talk about things that I'm interested in and help other people to learn to see things from my perspective or to, you know, to do things the way that I do them. But I'm fully aware that that's not the only way and that there are many ways. And I feel like, so I might also educate, but I don't feel an obligation to do that. And that's fair. It's something, the reason why I ask is because 
when it comes down to being a new individual such as myself you know there there are a few books out there such as yourself uh, you know the hypnotic amnesia i know uh sleeping girls uh, brainwashing brainwashing book, book yeah you know, mind play that yeah. there's there are a few easy to find stuff but one thing that i found after going to charmed was that you could have a conversation and somebody would be like oh well you know it's such and such induction and you're like what's that and you try to <laughs> right. go find that on the internet and you're gonna have just no luck whatsoever so yeah the reason why i asked that question is because from an educational perspective that was something that i think uh, wise guy was very proud of is that you know, one of the main goals for term being about educating individuals but i feel like everybody seems to think that only well, I'm going to say that there's not a lot of resources online to find this information. And I think that your point you made so eloquently before that the older style books are just so very like data and very script driven, very, very static mm -hmm. yeah. are just not the, the easy way or not the best way for people to learn today, I guess. There's no need to do it that way. One of the pieces of advice that I um, have given to people that are starting out as hypnotists is all you have to do is talk about what you're doing, what they're doing, and then what you'd like to have happen while you continue to talk about what they're doing. So, for example, you're sitting in a chair comfortably, your feet are flat on the floor, you know, that type of thing. So people get lost in the idea that they have to have a script. They think that maybe, oh, well, I, they don't have to mention, oh, I just saw your eyelids flutter or, oh, your mouth is getting a little slack or, oh, is that some drool that I see? You know, like you could literally talk about almost anything and put somebody into trance. And I have tried hypnosis with all different and various um, items as objects of eye fixation. And I know that almost anything can be turned into something fascinating. You can describe a thing and just draw somebody's attention to it while you're talking about them. Like a script is absolutely unnecessary, but sometimes there's an idea embedded in a script that you love. So make that your own. You know, that's that's the kind of thing that I really love, that when you take an idea that somebody has and you're like, oh, well, that idea really resonates with me. I can, I want to use that with somebody else and discover how they're going to respond. And so that's the thing I think is way more exciting about, you know, starting out with hypnosis. And I feel like people should be embracing the fact that they have observational ability and to put it to good use they don't need to be afraid they're just talking with a friend it can be really simple it can be really easy you can drop people into trance with almost anything you'll do great just go for it i think that's amazing advice <laughs> um so do you feel or, or i guess that one of the next ones comes up a lot is do you what do you feel is one of the biggest changes that you've seen happen in the community over the time that you've been involved with it? Um, have you noticed a large trend towards new people coming and going, the, the rise of the conventions? You know, what do you feel is one of the biggest changes for the community since you've been, since you started in it? So because conventions came about really early in my thing, and I'd been going to other conventions for a long time, um, for me, that's not a big change. And I, I, But I do applaud all the hypno events that there are out there, and I try to go to as many as I possibly can, although I'm not a huge fan. Never mind. Um, strike that. <laughs> um, I would definitely say that consent has become way more forward-focused since I first got into hypnosis, which I think is only a good thing, even if it sometimes seems at odds with the folks who want to receive unethical suggestions and be forced to act upon them. Um, and without any of that great relationship development, which often lead to like a long term and successful CNC play. I, there's a vocal group, if they're not very big, of people out there who really want uh, like some of the MC stories style hypnosis where you know, somebody snaps their fingers in your face and magically you're their slave and you're forced to do all these terrible, sexy things. I mean, that's great as a story, but I think in real life it doesn't work very well. And I think that encouraging and applauding people who get consent is really fantastic. And I think that we need more of that. And I'm glad to see that we are much more consent focused than we used to be 10 years ago. And that's that's a great point. I think that I had just started in the kink community myself uh, right before going to Charmed. And you don't really think about consent as an everyday thing in your normal life. But after you have that pointed out to you, 
it's amazing to, to think about how often we don't ask for certain things mm -hmm. when we should. And then there are a lot of times that we ask for it, you know, even though it's, it's never not a big deal. But there are so many things that we just look at somebody and, and say something and it is just an automatic call and consent and negotiation right there and then. Not for hypnosis, but just on an everyday level. Um, and mm -hmm. I think once you draw attention to it, it is something that is absolutely powerful because it is an important thing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> And I am all in favor of CNC with the right person and with the right relationship and knowing that you say as a subject, because I'm mostly hypnotist. So knowing that the subject is empowered um, and is fully never coerced, but fully on board and feels great about all the things that, you know, get done. That's what I like. I, I, I'm a huge fan of actual conformed Con informed consent, even if you're doing CNC play. I think that makes more sense. And I, I think that, like you said, it, it allows a much better, more full, I guess, or more ex experience capable relationship when it comes down to that versus it just being called a one and done. You know, you've got somebody that you've built and understood and been able to explore with. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, it, way better in the long run, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> So what's one thing that you always want to see of more in the community? Something that you feel is uh, should be encouraged? I mean, obviously the consent thing we were just talking about, but is there certain types of content you would love to see more of? More people becoming you know, hypnotists, more subjects, more communication? What's something you would love to see grow in the community? Um, let's see. So at events, I actually love to see public play. I love to see public play at events and I love when people share a little bit of themselves, no matter which side they're in out in the open, because I think it helps normalize what people do. And I think that at events, there's often a ton of new people and they don't always, they go to classes or they hang around in the halls, but they aren't really participating in ways that are really actual, real people, real couples or whatever group dynamic you have do things together in a way that lets them go oh that was really hot let's go let's go and try that with you know uh, each other or um you know the person next to them that they've you know ran into in the hall that they've been you know thinking about things to do with play i think that you can get amazing ideas about what sorts of play you can do when you watch other people do it and i'm not interested necessarily and i appreciate that they have these here but i'm not really interested in the dungeon spaces as much because maybe because I've had a ton of play and I can do that anywhere I want. But I feel like it's really helpful for folks to watch the way other people play and to get some sort of sense about the kind of things that are normal, the kind of things that are fun, even if they're like a little terrifying. Like if you want to do some crazy um, death scene with somebody, here's how you can do it. And oh, look, there's some aftercare afterwards so that um, we know that the person who just had their heart ripped out for example and eaten is actually alive and well and they're they're happy to be with their partner you know like i think that uh, and that's probably an extreme kind of example but i think that there are all sorts of kinds of plays that can uh, play that can happen and the more people see what's out there and the more they understand what people are capable of i think it allows them to ex um, to stretch and express their own interests more freely without being restrained by a script or ideas that um, maybe they're not good enough or not capable enough or their ideas suck because none of that's true. And I think that um, I would like to see more of public play. And I would also like to see when people have ideas that they feel free to share it with others, either as an uncon or at a class or to find somebody um, who's like an experienced teacher who could help them, you know, wrap it, all the niceties around it and bring it to people as um, as a class or some kind of event. I think that's really great when that happens. So I'd like to see those two things. That's fantastic. I think that that is absolutely how anybody loves to grow is all of a sudden you see somebody else doing something that's like, oh, I didn't even know that was a possibility. Why didn't I think of that? And then it's, <laughs> then you're scampering off going, I got to write this down. This will be amazing. Hold on. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, kind of coming here towards most of the close, but when you've been to hypnosis conventions before, 
what's one piece of advice you would give to somebody who's never been to one? Uh, so it's their first time. What's some advice that you would give them? Uh, I would to, say to... if possible, make friends in the online groups ahead of time. I would say um, interact with those people. I'm a, I'm not the kind of person who fills up a play date book ahead of time and has every hour scheduled for stuff. I'm That's just not my style. But I know for some people that can be a very successful way to get things in there. I'm definitely more go with the flow, hang out with the friends I already know, make some new friends, and just see what happens. So that's the kind of thing that I, I mean, you have to know what, fits your comfort zone. But if you're the kind of person who works best when you have a schedule, go for it. Just understand that convention time is a thing. And oh, also yeah. to be to be open to making new friends, to hanging out, to contributing to conversations. I will say that one of my least favorite things is people who, who lurk on the outside of a circle of folks and just stare and don't actually want to interact and come in. I feel like this is a, hypnosis is a really powerful tool for communication and no matter what side you're on being able to communicate with the other people around you is key so communicate with folks to the best of your ability we can always get better and come into the circle introduce yourself tell us a little bit about yourself ask questions answer questions and in general do your very best to have a great time when you're at these events they're charmed was literally um, one of my absolute favorite events. I've been to several of them. I don't know how many specifically right now. Most of them, if not all. Um, but it is a great event. I always have a good time there. And I am delighted and happy to, you know, meet new people, to do new things, to learn new things. And I think that having an open mindset has helped me to have a good time. And I think it could help other people to have a good time, too. And I think that is some great advice. That that was something I stumbled upon when I first came to Charmed. I didn't do the uh, ton of conversation with people in the online community first because, honestly, this is more of an impulsivity thing to just go, <laughs> oh, look, I this is something I've never explored before. This is a dark taboo for me that I've always wanted to you know let the light on. I should go. All right, I'm going to go. And then going there. But you're right. The the people in the the hypnosis hypnosis community who were at that convention were some of the most welcoming and open people I have ever met. You felt just capable of talking to anybody and about almost anything. And I think I made a joke about the whole, um, hey, look, you know, you get to know everybody in front of and behind you who mm -hmm. are you know in the same classroom as you because. Oh, hey, everybody involves the, oh, you know, look at the people around you, talk to them about maybe some of they've experienced, you know, that hands-on mm -hmm. interaction. You yeah. make a ton of friends at something like this. And even if it's just only for the convention, that's great. You, you've met some yeah. individuals, you've gotten some new experiences. But so far, I, I think that I've had a ton of people that I've kept in touch with since the convention. And mm -hmm. it's a small community. You get to know everybody. And through them, you learn and meet new other people. You find new places and new experiences. So yeah, really, that's a great piece of advice. <laughs> um, so just you kind of mentioned that you've been to Charmed more than a few times. Do you have like one of the favorite aspects about Charmed versus maybe some of the other hypnosis conventions that you'd love to just touch on? Something that you find is one reason why you enjoy so much coming back? So I think Charmed has done a bunch of things really well. Um, and I also tend to overlook a lot of things that are like some people will. So look, we've been in hotels where the elevator sometimes doesn't work well. <laughs> Find where the stairs are and do your very best to take the stairs. Um, you know, if that's a, if that's a possibility for you. I know it isn't for everybody, but um, I would say that there are one of my favorite things about Charmed is that there's a lot of stuff going on all the time. You can almost always find things that you'd like to do, that there are types of hypnosis tracks for everybody. There's a lot of play, there's a lot of social, uh, social stuff going on. And I think that it's really amazing that you can just do all sorts of things. Like there's almost no limit to the stuff you can do. I think Saturday night um, this past year, or this year rather, this past event, they had a really great interactive 
um, activities. And one of them was a garden of, I think they called it garden of earthly delights. So it was basically people as statues and you could go and respectfully interact with them. And that was thrilling and exciting to do. I had a great time doing that. And then there was, um, the bar, the speakeasy, which I had a great time being a bartender at, but con consistently I heard people talk about how much fun they had at speakeasy, how they loved the suggestions, how they were really happy to go through and interact with all the stuff that was there. So I think that um, those types of activities are indicative of the way that Charmed is really open to making these things fun, to bringing people together, to allowing people to mingle outside in the these areas so that a lot of stuff can happen that isn't the activity itself and I think that they just made it really welcoming for the most part and that that's um that's really powerful like there's some events that you go to and you may not necessarily feel super welcome as uh, attendee but I think that charm does a really great job of trying to make it inclusive and trying to make it fun and they succeed pretty well at it that's great to hear I uh... I have to admit, I thought the bee's knees was a lot of fun at the speakeasy. Probably... <laughs> I like all the drinks. <laughs> it's yeah, great. I'll, I'll tell one on myself because I was so inexperienced about things that uh, going through the front door, of course, you have to have the, the, the quick induction, the, mm -hmm. the, explan the suggestion kind of then. And the statement was made, and my brain just didn't really process. As soon as you walk through the door, you know, it goes away. And the people that I had joined with were taking a really long time outside. And I didn't even think about them. I'm like, where are these guys? So I walked out through the door, and everybody looks at me and goes, Did you just actually do that? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's all right. You've you you've heard it before. You can let it affect you again as you go through the door. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just thought, I just had to laugh because that was probably one of the, the funnest memories I had, but that was just <laughs> embarrassing, but it was just like, it happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody really blinked too hard at it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, so like one last question I've got is, do you have any fun memories you'd love to share about charm? Something that you, uh, feel was just something you would be happy sharing with individuals uh, that would be listening to this? So uh, I have several fun memories. Well, they're fun for me. I hope they're fun, fun for other people. Uh, one of my favorite memories was a kidnapping that um, started in, um, in the um, con space and then went to a room. Uh, and then another was stumbling upon an, uh, <laughs> No, I, I don't actually remember if this was at Charmed or not, so I'm, I can't say that one. Um, okay, so I really loved um, teaching a body writing class with Mab and um, just having people all over the rest of the weekend, you know, come up to me with things written on their body and showing me the way that they were using them. I just was delighted by the quick adoption of those ideas with the um, class participants, and that was really exciting. And I really just like getting to spend time with the friends that I've made over the years from far away that I don't get to see regularly. So, but Charmed is a great event to go to, to hang out with. There's always a lot of stuff going on. I think it's a, I've always had a really good time. I think that you could have a bad time anywhere if you wanted to, but that Charmed is a place where if you really wanted to have a great time, you can definitely let that happen. That's, I think that's a, a very glowing recommendation and very wonderful to hear uh for one split second was the body writing class this last charmed um i don't remember did we do it this time i think we might have done something different or we didn't do it we've done it a couple times i don't think we did it this time okay because there was an individual who came to uh the board game room later i think it was saturday i think it was saturday night friday or saturday i think it was saturday and they had on off buttons written on their hands oh the yeah well maybe hands. maybe we maybe we did sometimes things in the past blend together with me and i need better reminders but mm -hmm. um because it's only me trying to remind myself i'm not doing a good job right now yeah, don't, <laughs> but don't so maybe but we definitely we definitely did a bunch of that stuff and it's so much fun because mab is awesome and i had a really good time doing that class with her that's awesome. Yeah, that was probably the first time I'd ever seen really a long-term suggestion in play. 
and just watching how fast people would slap the on off button on this person's hand <laughs> oh my god and it was just, everybody just enjoyed being like hey so how you doing off and you just watch them just power down you turn them back yeah. on and right back off and it's like oh oh you're so fractionated at this point aren't you and they're like yes <laughs> Ah, the fun and joys <laughs> of uh, conventions, I'm guessing. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah. Well, is there any <laughs> last uh, things you want to add? I know you, you asked for the questions up front to kind of get an idea for your creative brain. Was there anything that you wanted to add personally to the conversation? Something that you felt like we should cover or something you wanted to add? Mm, not really. I just love hypnosis so much and I'm happy to talk about it and I love doing it and it really occupies a large portion of most of my days and I couldn't be more delighted and I really want to say thank you for asking me to do this and um, to let people know that I'll be doing um, something at Charmed which will probably involve some intermediate level stuff. And maybe a little bit of um, beginner stuff, but mostly intermediate level stuff about conversational hypnosis and how you can get suggestions to really stick and have a really great time with it. Well, apparently I just found my first class that I need to go to because that sounds like <laughs> a lot of fun. Ah, thanks. <laughs> okay. Well, Lee, thank you very much for your time. And I will let you get back to your deviltry in the hypnosis world. <laughs> thank you so much, Sai. Have a great night. You too.